Okay, today we're going to be playing with self-extracting uh, shell scripts. So we're basically going to be creating a bash script um, that contains files, binary files. This is convenient. You'll see um, some programs uh, uh, make uh, these for distribution rather than using a deb file, an RPM file. And really, um, I personally prefer a deb file and I prefer to get software through uh, repositories but if you want to create a script and you don't know how to or feel like building a deb file or you want to just make one file that can be put onto a a any Linux machine or even um, uh, Mac or Unix based machine pretty much any anything but Windows uh, and have files in it that extract um, and and run and do an install or whatever this is a way to do this now obviously you know you're distributing this people would have to make it executable to run it um, so, you know, it's all depending on what you want to do, but I'm just going to show you some basics of that today before I get talking too much. Let's do a search for tux and grab an image. And we're going to start off by embedding an image into a, a script. Um, let's just find a fun one of tux here. Uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm looking for maybe one I've never seen before. How about how about this little let's let's do let's do this one of Tux doing the little crane from the Karate Kid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, copy the location of this image, and I'll open up a terminal screen here, and make it a bit bigger, and I'm just going to once again make a folder within my temp folder. People ask me why I do this once again because this isn't stuff I'm going to be keeping. This is just for this tutorial. And I'll just call it um, extract. There we go. Doesn't really matter. So we'll w get and paste in the link of that image. So there it is. Let's rename it. I should have just named it when I was downloading it, but we'll just call it tux.png. My terminal screen is going off the side there a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, so we list out we have one file in here called tux.png. If we display it out, there it is. It's a PNG with a transparent background. Let's get into writing the script. I'm going to use vim and I'll just call this my script.sh. Start off like we do all our shell scripts, our bash scripts anyway, uh, with our um, shebang line there. And obviously, uh, if you're really going to make this uh, script, make it, um, uh, you know, run on a good number of systems, you may just want to use a basic shell. Because really, what we're going to be doing in here, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave a bash because, because uh, you know, that's what I have used in the past. And that's what my viewers are used for, but it doesn't make a difference, really. Now we're going to create a variable. We'll call it archive. Obviously, you can call it pretty much whatever you want. And we're going to do this. We're going to put inside a dollar sign and parentheses a command. We're going to use awk. And obviously awk would have to be installed on the system for this to work. Uh, you know, this isn't going to be a completely universal script, but awk is installed on most systems by default. And we're going to say archive below. Then port slash so so uh, awk and then a uh, single quote there or parentheses and there should be a space right there forward slash little caret symbol uh, underscore underscore archive underscore below underscore underscore and then another forward slash I'm going to explain all this in a second I'm going to say print nr plus one exit zero and then oh that should be a yes right like that a um, another single quote there and then we'll say dollar sign zero now let's start off with that dollar sign zero if you've watched my tutorial on arguments um, dollar sign zero will be the name of your script so whatever you name this script and it can be renamed it will add in that uh, name into this variable. So basically we're telling awk to look at the name of the script we're in, 
look for a line in that script that starts with this, which is archive below, which we're going to create in a minute, and then it's going to count the number of lines after that and make archive equal to that. So uh, basically, if we do right here, underscore, underscore, archive, and you know you don't have to have it say archive, you can have it say whatever you want. Archive is just kind of a standard. Just make sure whatever you type here will be whoops, the same as what you type up there. So basically, this is going to take awk, look at our current script that we're in, look at here, and count the number of lines after that to the end of the file. I'll explain more on that in a second. I think you might see where we're going here. Maybe, maybe not. Well, so it counts those lines. Now we're going to use the tail command, dash n plus dollar sign archive, dollar sign zero, and then we will put the output of that into a file, we'll just say temp image dot png. Okay, so that's pretty much our entire script for the most part. Obviously, we're going to add more to it, but this is pretty much functional here. So as we said, this is creating an, a variable called archive, which is going to be the number of lines below this archive line. So if there's 10 lines, we are now going to take, once again, dollar sign zero, the current file we're in, and we're going to tail out, so just print out the last number of lines, which would be the archive line. So if there were 10 lines, basically it would take whatever the last 10 lines in this file are and put them into this file. Now, one more thing we want to add right before our archive here is an exit command. Otherwise, when our script got to this part of the code, it's go it would say, hey, no command known archive below, blah, blah, blah. You also want to make sure that there are no lines below archive below. So if I enter here a few times, that's bad. We don't want that. And that's one of the things where uh, Vim comes in real handy uh, compared to some other text editors where it shows you these little lines meaning there's no line here. So you can see real clearly if I move up here that there are lines right here and here and here because there isn't that little squiggly line there. And that little squiggly line without that there saying there's no line, um, that will screw up our script. Now you can figure that out in other text editors, but Vim just makes it real nice and visual for you right there. So we want to make sure that there are no lines, even if they're blank lines, after this archive below. That's very important. Okay, so we will save this script. Next thing we do is take our tux PNG and put it into our script. So what we're going to say is cat tux and then double waka wakas or double greater than greater than symbols which means we're appending, not replacing, um, into our, so we're taking the binary data of our tux file and piping it in, redirecting it in to the bottom of our script. We'll hit that, and now if we go vim my script, you can see after that archive below is a bunch of gibberish. That is actually our PNG file. Our PNG file is now in our shell script. But basically what's going to happen is when you run this script, it's going to go, okay, look at archive below, count the number of lines, take this file, just take everything after archive below and put it into this image file. So we will save this, make our script executable, plus x, my script, and we will run my script now it looks like nothing happened because we didn't create any sort of output, but if we list, actually we'll even just display out our temp image. See, there is a file in our image, our temp folder called image PNG, and if we display it, you can see that it is our image file right there. Uh, let's remove that file. So if I run that display again, you can see it does not exist. Image manager goes, oh, no, it doesn't exist. Give me another file to work with. We'll control C out of that. We'll go back into our script file and we'll add to it. Now just remember, don't edit anything at the bottom of this file. But what we'll do is we'll say display temp image dot png. We'll save that. Now if we run our script again, dot slash the name of our script, boom. 
it extracted the image and displayed it. And we could even add a option to the end of that if we want to remove temp image.png, basically cleaning itself up after. So now when we run the script, it will extract that file from our shell script, display the image, and then when we close the image, it has now deleted the file, so the file is no longer in our temp folder. So you can see if I go display temp image and I try to autocomplete, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. So that's the basics of it. Next tutorial, because I don't want this tutorial to get too long, we are going to do the same exact thing but with multiple files so that you can create something. So basically now I can, the whole point of this is I can now send the shell script to somebody, they can click on it. Obviously that's kind of pointless, you could just send somebody the image, but having multiple files to where you have images, uh, sound, maybe videos, and if you're creating a game you know, or a program, you can have multiple scripts that uh, within the shell script that all extract and then run and then you can either clean themselves up or do an install process. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun with this in the next tutorial uh, on next Terminal Tuesday. I thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description and um, I just hope that you have a great day. Bye-bye.